Well, all right, all right, all right. And welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean. That over there is Brian. What's up, everybody? And back again with us is our good buddy, Joel. Hey, hey, how's it going? All righty. We're doing great. Yes. All happy to be back here with a special extra episode because, man, I just couldn't stand it. I came across this little thing about a Time Bandits TV show, and I'm like, why the hell have I heard, like, zero about this? Well, I think maybe we're going to try and answer those questions if we can, because there's not a lot to fucking find out about, honestly. So, before we get started, guys, please remember, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, leave us a comment, and remember, it's always free to hit the subscribe button, and it helps us out tremendously. So thank you guys so much for doing that. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. We appreciate it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, man, Time Bandits TV show. I mean, like at first I was like, wow, uh, I loved the original Time Bandits so much. I'm not sure uh, well, how can I feel about this right now? I have to really give this some serious thought. I don't know anything about this show. I'm not sure I, we're going to know much more. Um, but yeah, the old movie. Let's talk about that. You know, let's yeah. let's just kick off with that because that old it, gem, right? Yes, I mean we're talking a Monty Python alum, director Harry Gilliam. Eric helped, right? What's that? It did, wasn't didn't Eric Idle help? He did. Um, yeah, he, I, did, he did. He did. Yeah, a lot of times there'd be others involved. You know. Yeah. Um, well, this, you can see it on, the, you may not be able to see it on the poster, but I, I can tell you from here, it's produced and directed by Terry Gilliam. Uh, screenplay was by Michael Palin, which is Monty Python. Well, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, Palin and, often helps. Yeah, and the songs by George Harrison. Yes. And the executive producer was George Harrison and Dennis O'Brien. Now, George, amazingly, put up the money for a lot of this and, yeah. and did, did the money for other Monty Python works too. He was a big fan. Yes. So uh, this, a lot of this is, is because George did it. Another George in our and life. I love oh my that God. song. When the, when the movie ends, man, I just love that song. I think oh, it's yeah. like Obla D something or other is the name. I forget. It's, it's got a weird name know, like I that. I don't know the name of it, but I know the song. Obla D da de, something like that, man. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. fucking so good. I really just absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, Terry Gilliam, man. I mean, this guy, well, I saw this movie in the theaters when I was a wee lad of, what, three years old, I think. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I remember it though, man, because it was so vivid in the way it the way it was. Uh, just the, the yeah. costumes, the ideas. You know, it's really not something a three year old probably should see. But I mean, it was. I just remember it. You know, I mean, it just stayed with me, and I couldn't wait when I was when I was old enough to actually remember it. You know, it was one of those weird movies where it, it fell into. Uh, there was already material like. I wouldn't say like this, but similar to it that existed. But it really felt to me that Time Bandits was kind of marketed to our age group back then. The younger, maybe not our age group, right? maybe a little bit older, but it just kind of seemed like more younger material, right? I mean, for sure, man. I mean, like you're talking, you know, fantasy with dragons and, and uh, mythological creatures and space and, you know, yeah. just all kinds of different ideas um good but and evil again you know? the monty python guys right yeah <laughs> but, I mean, that, to the table. Absolutely. Dude, terry's known for all his his work in python back in the day was all the animations in between everything and they were so out there man Amazing, yeah yeah and the, and it shows in in just about every one of his movies the only movie i never really could come to grips with that a lot of people love brazil um, no, I love Brazil. You love Brazil? It okay, was cool. uh, um, the Robin Williams one um, with Jeff Bridges. The Fisher King. The Fisher King. Just ah, not my bag, man. King. It wasn't really like his style. Yeah. You know? Um, it had the one scene with the uh, where it had like a knight on a horse in it. And that yeah. was about as much as Terry Gilliam it got to me. That was it. I guess that. You know, it's just very subtle. But this Time Bandits, mm, I mean... Just look, we've got the you know we got the trailer going on while while we're talking right now, and 
yeah. you can see just every kind of wild idea going on. That man. seems I mean, just, so good. Yeah. Oh, wow. That seems so great. And they're going all through time. See, I mean, like I was a huge Doctor Who fan, classic Doctor Who fan growing up. I've yeah. always been about time travel. And uh, I guess, you know, maybe it stemmed from seeing this as a kid because it just it, it gave me the thoughts of, wow, wouldn't it be cool to be able to go here and see this happen? And, you know, uh, to be fair, in our childhood, there was a lot of time manipulation involved in TV shows and stuff. Yeah, in the movies, like Back to the Future. I mean, it was a big deal. Time time travel was a big thing, for sure. Was it Little Wonder? Small Wonder? Something like that? There was a... a, a no. Not time travel. The robot yeah, with the girl yeah. that could freeze time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there, was a, that there was a TV show about a little girl that could freeze time. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that one at all. Yeah. But you got all these great, um, what do you call them, dwarf actors? I don't know what the correct term is. But Little people is what they used to be called. I don't know if that's still. Yeah, Kenny Baker, obviously uh, famous for being the, the person inside R2-D2 in, in many shots in the Star Wars uh, movies. And uh, I'm trying to think of some other names. There's some very famous names in there. Uh, if I could see a list of the but can you have the imdb yeah, joe Asner, right yeah what we'll pull it up. well I'm, I'm talking specifically the doors one of them um I, I can't think of his name i know it when i see it it's that guy with the hat the one with the hat okay that's uh malcolm dixon strutter yeah no strutter. jack purvis that's who i'm thinking of oh, i know wally. jack purvis wally yeah um <laughs> poor wally i think wally bites it right and then he brings wally back yeah <laughs> spoiler alert it's 1980 what, you know, just movie. a little bit <laughs> oh sorry yeah, yeah can you go up just a little bit let's see um yeah what a great cast i mean you had sean right. connery ian holm here's kenny kenny yeah is, there's kenny uh, fidget fidget yep yeah i guess it was just jack purvis i was thinking of i i have seen him and other stuff um uh, throughout the years and and you know i'm a huge anglophile so i've lived off the bbc stuff uh it's interesting you have uh there catherine hellman's yep playing the ogre she is also Mrs. Joe yeah. brought up in brazil oh yeah so she's definitely somebody that, that has worked with gilliam before yeah but yeah what i mean john cleese speaking of python i mean Cleese. yep and this was just, uh pre uh the shining right uh, uh this is know, 1980 so after, after the shining, shining. After, after the, the shining, shining. yeah, so yeah. shelly was I, I did i i couldn't recall how how much she could work after that right because so, so she had popeye dramatic. come out too yeah with robin yeah Williams. i remember oh, yeah. Popeye. yeah so she was she hot dude like at this time she her her star was very very high right there yeah, but yeah. it was going down oh yeah it was about uh 85 was, when it really started to dive yeah this was 81 time mass yep. 81 yep but yeah, she she did she did a lot of things early eighties, you know, so I was and latter seventies, right, right. And like anything specific stands out for you guys? Any scenes? Um, I mean, there were certain themes to the scenes that we've talked about. Like there were there was a large amount of camp in a certain sense, but there was also camp in, in like the quality of the production of the time, right? Oh yeah. Well, you have uh, like the the scenes with Shelley Duvall and and Michael Palin. They were always in different time zones, but always like had these different, very comical scenes. The Robin Hood scene, the Titanic scene. I mean, just great, funny stuff, little yeah. comic relief stuff. And it was littered all throughout, like you say, very campy. I like that. That's a very British term. For Doctor Who was considered very campy back in the day. Very much so. Yep. Joe, what about you, man? What what did you like about? time bandits anything specific stand out for you well i was I, you know but i always if i quote something from time bandits it's always the supreme being it's, it's uh, i say it all the time and I, I i think the wife looks at me funny when i say it but it's you know yeah <laughs> and when that face so, scene comes down oh, the hall yeah. that yeah, as a four-year-old was one of the things that stayed with me for years and years and years was that giant face and him coming down that long hallway when Kevin's room just expands down, you know, yeah. Oh man, stuck with me forever. It's like yeah, the right. blue blood in flash Gordon. When that dude got impaled by me, yeah. I'll never forget that as a kid. Cause I saw yeah. that in the theater too. <laughs> it's wild. What stays with you, man. Yeah. I, 
I have, I mean, although there might have been a little bit of campy, sexy stuff in this or campy, violent stuff in this, it was rated PG. It's an hour and 50 minutes long. Uh, when it's rated PG, that doesn't mean PG 13. So it means uh, it's not rated G. And G. as you, as, right. as you can tell, right. you know, it's not general audience, but it, it does have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it's, it's more on a British PG back then, you know, a little bit British say, sensibilities. Go ahead. So yeah. We should say that PG 13 for one, wasn't even around back then. And that's right. PG went a lot further than, than the pg of today right yeah this is I, I, I think for me is it was kind of a shock to the system when uh indy said the line on the bridge right before he cut the rope and and that really broke the pg to pg-13 uh back then and i, I yeah. don't know I, I don't want to repeat it but yeah you, you get the idea because yeah. youtube will mark us for saying it, or mark me for saying it but, but yeah you get the idea it, it was it was a different kind of pg than what we get today so i i, I know the um the kids of yesteryear, like us, you know, who this was back in our, you know, five to ten year old stage or, or four. Yeah, <laughs> four. If you if you get to that stage in your life, um, it, I don't think this screwed us up heavily, but it does have memorable moments. And you're like a sponge at that age. So right. no yeah, a lot of the stuff will stay with you if you're seeing it at a younger age. It's a good movie to learn about good and evil. Yes, it's very much that. Yeah, that's and I'm being I mean, serious because good, even good is not so good in a way. Right. He's got yeah. a very got evil it. side to him. So yeah, it's really a good fucking <laughs> the way to learn at a young age. Well, I mean that's kind of in Terry's well house anyway, right? Oh sure, those man. kind of themes and He's how he making you think, them. always yeah. making you think. You know, shooting right. like I think of like some of his animations and. Uh, the Holy Grail with the trumpets in the ass. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just brilliant stuff, man. But the Braves you know, are robbing. Wonderful. Yeah. Brave, brave, brave. Yeah. So <laughs> little figures over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> we say all this about this wonderful, wonderful movie that we love so much. Classic. It's classic it is. To say that I learned, obviously, I said in the beginning of the podcast, that there's an Apple TV show. On the, just around the corner, about to come out, month, right? Yeah, right at the end of the uh, month, Ju two July and a half weeks away, two and a half weeks fourth. Yeah, um, that's not far. It'll be here before we know it. And man, there is almost nothing out there about it. I mean, you think about how many shows that we are watching now or knowing coming out that already have trailers, like teaser yeah. trailers or anything. This has zero. This should have a minimum of two by now. Yeah. It has zero trailers. It barely has descriptors for the show, which yeah, is really, I mean, really bad. It has two promotional photographs that are official. Everything else is somebody was, somebody was, I think it was all shot in New Zealand, pretty sure. And, and I think I read that. And I think that's from Taika. And it is Taika Waititi. Um, and awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it, uh, <laughs> I know there were people who caught behind the scenes photographs, but I can't really show that stuff, you know, yeah. but I can give you an idea that, you know, there was a lot of controversy early on and it, it wasn't what you think. It, it, it a lot of the controversy has been uh, oddly enough, uh, official controversy, which is really weird. It's, it's like, uh, we know that, um, and I think Taika took it a, a different way. I, I've heard Taika say, I've heard the words come out of his mouth that, that he says he didn't want to use uh, dwarfs. He didn't want to use little people. And he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to upset the current political uh, correctness, climate, whatever, whatever you want to call it. He didn't yeah. want to. And I was like, I, I, I kind of think that was a loss. I think they would have mm -hmm. wanted to do it. And I think oh, yeah. like, I, there I think is a guild. Yeah, right. I know For there is. <laughs> I know. And then I think Peter Dinklage spoke up about it. And so that, I, I, okay. I, didn't really... I was going to say, oh, yeah. I'd heard Go something ahead. about Peter Dinklage speaking up about something. I was just about to say, is it this show? And it makes sense. I don't know how I didn't pick up on that because I've heard news about this. But I guess yeah. I didn't hear what it was about. I just heard the end part it's, about the it's dwarves. Just more, and, 
it's wow. more controversy. But it, like I said, Taika chose not to use him. And then people were upset with some of his casting choices that he did. And then um, and I'll tell you about that, because because he tried to I think he tried to diversify it. And I get that. And I got no problem with that. If it's a good story, none of us are going to care that well, it's there's no diversity in the dwarf culture. Well, that, yeah, I think there is, but he did. Like I said, he didn't want to upset. Uh, that's these are his words. Like he didn't want to upset a political audience. Yeah. by casting dwarfs, and I no, was I mean, like, fair, oh, okay. but like, I, I don't. Did, he didn't really expand on it. And didn't Dinklage say basically like, "Suck it up, Buttercups," all to all the dwarfs I think out there? He did. I think yeah, he did. Yeah. Like he's he yeah. You know, which is a little unfair that people because the opposite of the people that reacted to him saying that are like. Well, yeah. that's great for you. You've had a you know pretty successful career here, real recently. Right. So it's real easy for you to say, "Oh, suck it up. You're not suffering." Yeah, and yeah. I agree with that, man. I mean, yeah. you know, let's let's be realistic about it, Mister Dinklage. Well, I mean, to be fair, he has struggled to get where he is. Sure, but he has at that level. Level like you were so saying, he should understand but... more than anybody. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't written and directed. Well, no, that's not true. He did like three. He wore three hats. I, I disagree with this multi hat wearing stuff. Yeah, I do too. He, that's where Doctor Who suffers. And yeah. oh, and acolyte. You want to talk about that? Yep. Let's let's not yep. go there. But no, let's uh, not. Yeah, that, let's let's just leave that one. But yes, you you get the idea. He he wore a few hats, but um, he also did this with. Um, Jermaine uh, and Jermaine, uh, we like a lot. And 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 I'm talking about Jermaine Clement Clement. I have to say that right. Um, but uh, uh, Brian and the wife, my wife, Brian and I have all seen Jermaine before in uh, uh, Legion, the Marvel show, which was excellent. And, and it, it's an excellent show. It is crazy. And it's got that Brazil f- feel to it. It's got, you would think, got that disconnect. Yeah, yeah. you would think they would have grabbed Terry to come over and do that. And I was right. like. Woo! I mean, it's got that feel, and the shots are cinematic. It's glorious. The audio is glorious. The pictures are glorious. The the scenes the are psych- psychedelic. The, the the cast is amazing. I mean, yeah. it, it it did not do well, and it's it's really it's like one of those. It's probably a good thing for film school because when when I was in film school, uh, the only Gilliam uh, movie that they wanted us to watch was Brazil. Brazil that was it. Sure. It was yeah. just Brazil, and I was like, okay. And I didn't quite get it, but now I get it now. You know, I, I still wrote reports on it back then, and they did all that. But if I if I was looking at something in modern day, not too far away, Legion would have been a, a good choice. Legion has a lot of things going for it uh, cinematically, and audio, and uh, oh. Crazy, crazy, crazy psychedelic scenes. Um, but nevertheless, um, I, I heard um, uh, in one article, and I think it was uh, Collider. And it, like I said, we're guys and folks out there. We don't have a lot of information, but what I can give you is uh, uh, Collider did an interview with uh, Watiti, and he he did what he did with the dwarfism and dwarfs and little people, whatever, whatever is appropriate to call them. my apologies for not knowing the direct term. Uh, but what TD tells him in an interview um, that he, he was trying to honor uh, parts of Gilliam's work. He really was. And, and he says in this article that uh, he teases that a few familiar faces might pop up throughout the series. I loved working with the cast and all the actors that we got in, Watiti said. We have repeat actors uh, who change roles throughout the different episodes. They have that in the film as well. It's kind of a Monty Python thing where people come back and play a different character. And okay, yeah. we see we see this in Time Bandits where we'll have like Shelley Duvall is playing sure, multiple yeah, characters across. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's fantastic that he, first off, trying to honor yes. the canon. I give that's it credit. That's a big step. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him an award for just saying that right off the bat. <laughs> I was like, really? You want to honor the canon of Terry's? Okay. Michael Palin and Terry will be very proud that you yeah. said such a thing. And then thank you for that. Yes, and, thank you. And then when I start going deeper into it, um, it, it, it's still it's enriching the way Taika talks about it. And I'm glad. I'm really glad that he he – he enjoyed it, and I and I think he. I'm sorry, Jamie, Jamie Clement, Clement, Taika. and what Taika Watiti boy. Don't you have some um, pictures of them? Um, I think I do. I can show you. Uh, I Jermaine. saw Taika earlier. I think. Yeah, yeah you do definitely have one of Taika. 
Oh, they're all popping. Oh, Jermaine, wait, people who might That's not Jermaine. know. Him. Yeah, there you go. Let me bring this that This is up. Jermaine. Uh, this actually is a shot. Look at this yeah. shot. Oh, and oh this, okay. I know this, this is dude. a shot from Legion. This is a shot from Legion. I have Ooh. seen this dude in something. Um, Man, what a shot. I mean, he's done a lot of other stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like yeah, that, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. James, 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 James is awesome, dude. Actor. And he's got a nice resume, too. And he's he's a fine actor and, and he's yeah. doing well. Uh, but yeah, let me click on forward here. So, this is the, the old and. Oh, you, God, there we go. Yeah. So, now we're going to go. Uh, end of the new and this is where it starts to worry me um, this is IMDB and there's no trailer and no trailer at all and there's one picture and it's this one and I'll show it to you in a bit but uh, um, yeah I mean it, look at this television adaptation of Terry Gilliam's 1981 film Time Bandits which centers on a young boy who discovers a time traveling portal in his bedroom a series premiere July 24th 2024 that's not much you can click on this photo uh, yeah, and then that clip there is all just about Taka's work. Yeah, yeah. And, and it doesn't. It you can scroll down, and uh, the main kid who's who's playing Kevin, his he's named after Superman. Look at that. His name Kal-El. is His name is Kal El. Isn't that something? What a yeah, name! A, yeah, isn't that something? Now Lisa Kudrow, we know from uh, Friends. That's where right. she was super yeah, popular. I like Phoebe her a lot. from Friends. Yeah, she's one I of like the main her characters. humor anyway. But you, you may not know a lot of these people. Uh, but like I said, uh, uh, a couple of comebacks here. Probably a that, lot of uh, uh, New Zealand actors, I would venture to say. Maybe. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And uh, and it, it doesn't go into super detail about uh, some of these are. <laughs> they show some names, some roles and things like that. And, and I'm OK with that. Uh, but uh you really you, you have to get away from IMDb because they don't they don't have the full picture and uh, they only give you just a little bit and that picture, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, and yeah, you the, had to do some real digging to find this stuff. <laughs> too. Right. right. Yeah. When you go into the cast, you, you can see that Jermaine uh, actually wrote five of the episodes here, uh, which is cool, I think. And directed. You can see that Taika uh, only directed one episode. That's wow. it. Okay, uh, but well, he's a busy all, man. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. probably doing a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, now uh, there's a series writing credit. If you scroll down, you you can see Taika, Taika, Taika. Sure. So yeah. Taika's got three, uh, no, two, two episodes he wrote, uh, and then they're created for television credit. And I don't understand that. And then you go down. Look, there's Terry. Terry is credited for based in part on characters created by. Okay, right. well, that makes sense. So, and then Michael, Michael Palin, yeah, uh, based in part on characters created by. So at least they left them in the credits as as we go into well, it. So it looks like maybe we'll see maybe some old uh, footage or something, we, like a uh, flashback um, or some kind of thing, or I don't know. Unknown. I mean, like I said, we know very little, and I'm having to guess by looking at descriptors. Yeah. That, that's the problem. But my guesses are pretty good. <laughs> so sure, you know, yeah. I, I might be able to tell you the whole story of the acolyte from the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> you might go check back our videos. You know, no yeah, but yeah, it's it's um it's probably okay. It's probably go ahead, Brian. I was just gonna say, speaking of Jermaine and Taika, if if anybody were alive today, I don't know. There are probably other people out th- there that could do this credit. Yeah. Uh, but given the work that I've seen from those two, they oh, yeah. are probably better fitted than most. Yeah. I'm still not expecting a lot because yeah. it is Terry Gilly- Terry Honest- Gilliam adapted by someone else. Right. right. Honestly, Mel Brooks would be the only other person alive I would think I would want tackling this and I wouldn't even trust that 100%. No, I wouldn't either because it's yeah. not exactly. I'm just saying yeah. somebody that can touch on, you know, a little bit of ludicrous in them and stuff, you know, I mean, that'd be the closest thing. Yeah. Maybe well, even uh, Marlon Wayans. Well, you just saw how I talked yeah. about yeah. Legion. Yeah. If I if I go and look up Legion, the TV show, yeah. I would say uh, with 100% accuracy, if you tell me the same people that made Legion are making this, I'd go, I bet they are. And I'd be 99% sure that it was going to be something like that. Surprisingly, Legion is one of the few series I've ever seen, seen that can capture some of the aspects of whimsy and some, some of the more positive aspects of uh, Terry Gilliam and Pratchett's work. Uh, yeah, at the same time. Yeah. 
uh, my my wife's favorite person that's an actress is in this too. I'll pull it up uh, since it's my wife's favorite actress and she might speak up behind me here. But this is Legion. Look at this poster. It's like something wow. out of the 70s. Yeah, this this right. show was on FX and it, it is oh, just... Oh, so they're it, X-Men, huh? Uh, well, and it's based on something related, but it's not really right. like a mutant movie. It, there oh, are really? mutant things going on, obviously like that, but it's more like a i don't know what to call it i wouldn't either not really from the source material right it almost looks like alice in wonderland there it does right and look at these things does this not look like gilliam yeah it does i can see yeah do you see that does this not look like gilliam no wait now does taka have anything to do with this show i don't think so but uh uh jermaine jermaine does and it's not jermaine yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. he does this is no holly yeah 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 is he just an actor on the show, or does he write for it? Or does he's an say? actor. He may have done some writing because he was right. experienced in writing at this point. I guess yeah, cool there was just a scene with this out. dude and some on his head. It looked very Gilliam. Here he is. He's in seventeen episodes, twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen. We watched every one of these. I remember that. Oh, wow. it's older than I thought. I knew I'd heard of it. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's worth the watch. It really I is. Suggestions is with it. I, I I would accept Watchmen maybe, but the rest were like on point oh yeah oh crazy show Def- definitely yeah look david Haller is a troubled young man diagnosed with as schizophrenic but after a strange encounter he discovers special powers that will change his life forever he and spoiler alert he kind of has like every power that's why it's called legion he is legion he has but every, every power. Is imagine power. imagine every yeah. superhero every one of them it's in his head because he's schizophrenic it's yeah. like uh, he could be anybody, and that's yeah, what makes it so sweet. loony. I mean, yeah. it's just woo. <laughs> it's well, crazy. Like, if you knew the source material going into this, it all also pre- presented kind of like a a weird mental exercise as you were watching because it it was very easy to imagine all of the characters that were in this were characters yeah. in his head, and right. they they pushed the way at that a lot. And it was kind of obvious maybe that wasn't the case, or maybe it was. Yep. So if you would have if you would have told me Noah Hawley is doing Time Bandits, I, my thumbs would have been already up. I'd have been like, yeah. really? And Jermaine's there too. My thumbs would have already been up. So I not well, to say anything against Taika, but let, let's just stay on point here. Not to say anything against Taika. Taika's fine, and I do like Taika's off the wall work. And uh, I think the wife and I just finished watching the Pirate Show, which got canceled. Um, uh, right. Our flag, our flag needs death. death. Which yeah. is a bro, a bromance. It's a, it's actually a gay story, and right. and it was good. Reese Darby, right? Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Three Star well, was amazing. But so was I so agree. Good. I agree that he like when you hear his name, you're like, okay, so that's at least a good name. So yeah. what do you think though is the reason we know nothing about this? Why aren't they? So, why are they seem like they're embarrassed by it? Yeah, that's the weird part. And here's one of the one of the screenshots you can see. Well, this is it. This is all MDB has is this one right. screenshot. You can see Phoebe here. Um, and this is our Kevin character here. It does um, look kind of interesting to look at because of yeah. uh, what they're carrying, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, recently, and this is new to YouTube just about because I haven't seen it on anybody else's video. But if you click on Apple TV... This is a new shot. It's not not much different than the other shot, but at least right. it says it's coming on July twenty fourth yeah, on this Apple is their TV big promo. Plus. Right. This is it. So no trailer. This is your uh, landing page, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is where you. This is where it shows up. Yeah. You go straight into this. Now I, I said, okay. Well, they got this. They got to put out press materials. So I, I go look at the press materials. This is the press materials. Watch this. Embark on a comedic high stakes journey through time and space with a ragtag group of thieves and their newest recruit, an 11 year old history nerd. Together, they set out on a set out on a thrilling quest to save the boys, parents and the world. And it's got the release date. It's rated TV PG. So same as the old, but this PG is a little different than that old one, which is what we're trying to tell you earlier. But this is TV PG, kids and family oriented. Mm. And, I, and I don't know, but this is what it is. Now you scroll down. That's it. And we go cast Jeez. and crew. And I'm like, really? It was too many anything for the background down there. No. Right? I mean, I, I scrolled down 
And I'm like, really? That's the press release? Really? Wow. So that's the whole press release. So I'm like, well, what's going on, guys? I can't tell. But if you go to this page, you can see, uh, like I said, Ta- Taika wears many hats here. Uh, Lisa Kudrow is playing Penelope. Taika Watiti is playing the Supreme Being. He's the yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Jermaine, I think this is great, is playing pure evil, which is fantastic. That is fantastic. They call him something else in the old one, right? Yeah, Yeah, so we go back and we check the... There's Jermaine. It was close to to that, but it wasn't pure evil. Yeah, let's see what he was called back then. He's called Evil Evil Genius. Genius. David Warner, Evil Genius. Fantastic actor we just lost recently in the last year or two. Yep. Yeah, it's really bad I mean, losing some of these people. Uh, yeah, man. That was it. Yeah, so here, here's a list of the cast and what roles they play, they're playing. And this is the article on IMDb. And I'm like, really? But it says, upcoming Taika Waititi movie remake may be removing dwarfs from the project, not to offend cancel culture. And it goes into the bit I was talking about. It's not worth reading. It's what I was talking about. He's like, just he's trying to push for inclusivity. But he don't want to make anybody mad. And, and I, I get that. And this was like a year and a half ago. Still, that's no, not news. That's something that, yeah. that happened a year and a half ago. Yeah. And it's kind of just buried. And so I went further back to see if there was even more. And this company, I don't even know this is a company or, yeah, or whatever. I don't, I don't know these people. But the, this is, you know, grain of salt because I can't. I can't prove it or disprove it, but just so I I can show you world of real way back. An alleged and, article. Yes, it, it, definitely an alleged article. And I think it totally is, but it, it let's, let's cut through, take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt because the next one makes it even worse. So it's Taika Waititi is currently in New Zealand. This would have been a year and a half ago, directing the first three episodes of his Apple C, uh, series adaptation of time bandits, ambitious project that could go e- easily go wrong. Terry Gilliam, the 1981 movies director had perfectly balanced that fine line between humor and drama. Gilliam, who has an executive producer credit on the Apple Apple series decided to visit the new Zealand set last month. The cast and crew soon realized just how irritated Gilliam was by what he was seeing. He wasn't happy. He kept groaning and making remarks. One crew member told me Terry was supposed to be there for two weeks, but he left after three days. The same person adds his disdain for the entire project was quite obvious. You probably won't be hearing any praise for this series from anytime soon. Now, listen, I mean, this goes into it, talks a little about, you know, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Brazil, 12 Monkeys. We didn't mention that. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's got Johnny Depp. That's the story of Hunter S. Thompson. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, this is great, but this is from the world of real, right? And then if you do a little bit more deep digging, you get this from film stories, which I also can't prove is real or not. Yeah. And even the date's crazy. It goes back to 2016 and a much younger picture, Terry. And it says here, an update to the story. We've been in contact with Paramount over this story in the one I just read you. And it says, and have updated it according, accordingly. The original story remains below, but this is now the key line. A spokesman for Paramount TV Studios said the story is false, that Terry Gilliam never came to the set of Time Bandits. And I'm like, okay. So yeah. the little bit of press that it did get that was a little bit controversial that had well, something yes. to do with behind the scenes, it didn't cut the mustard. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, this is this is not cool. And and then this one final piece, man, uh, th- this uh, person plays a character named Judy. And she's in about half to uh, half of the episodes. There's I think there's 10 episodes. Did I say that? It's back there on think, the thing. But yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, this person claimed to be physically assaulted multiple times by an actor, uh, psychologically abused on the set uh, of the show, and um, uh, alleged an alleged back injury occurred with some PTSD. And um, and you, you can check this out. This is Variety. This yeah, is a variety. different animal. Yeah. This is a different animal. I can pretty much tell you if it, Variety put it out, somebody – in say. A, Yeah. What, Before we that? go any further, all of this is allegedly either side. Yeah, because we weren't side. there. Yeah. yeah, Brian wasn't there. Sean wasn't there. I wasn't there. I'm just telling you right. what we found. Yeah, so it, allegedly. Right, and and I, I'm going to sum this up for you if you want to see it. It's from Variety, and it, it did happen some time ago. We're talking these these events happened a year and a half ago. Uh, but basically, um, let's see, where is it? Right, is it here or there? 
All right. The source close to the show confirms that this person uh, quit before the production wrapped on Time Bandits, uh, disputes the allegation that they were coerced to do so. Instead, this source claims that after an official investigation could not substantiate this person's allegations, the actor was given the option to continue working or to leave the production without having their contract enforced, and that they were still paid for all episodes that they were originally set to appear in. So uh, um, just so just so we're clear here, uh, all the allegations that this person claimed in this article appear to have been caught on camera and it was physical scenes that happened in the show. And there's one point where they point out that this person fell and they had to be picked back up. And then they, they get, they were subject to some kind of back injury and they were asked, you know, kindly, do you want to, you know, would you like us to pay, pay you out? And like I said, they only appear in half the episodes and and they're gone now. Um, And there's more to this story if you're interested, but I'm not going to go into it because (laughs) I mean, it gets, it gets crazy because they went and looked at the footage of the injuries and it was literally normal physical work that you, I guess you could have had a stunt double four or something like that, but they chose to do it themselves. Then maybe that there's something going on here, but like I said, mm-hmm. everything that they claimed was, uh, you know, the problem was they caught it all on camera. They everything. That, yes. And, and the paramount, uh, investigative team came in and said, we have found no wrongdoing and, uh, we'll offer you, you know, like a contract out. And, and that's great mm-hmm. that they did. But, um, you know, I think this, this, particular person i don't know them and 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 i don't uh, you know i'm not going to go into it heavily but again just just a little stain basically for the show again before we know anything and then it says here time bandits was shot in new zealand and it wrapped up production in january 2023 the source says that incident between this person and the castmate occurred over 18 months ago which would place it in before november of 2022 uh, this person's character will still appear in the finished series. Their character was written out of episodes that were shot after they left. When asked for comment, representatives for Watiti and Apple TV Plus deferred to Paramount TV Studios, which brings us to yeah, uh, well, the crazy you, question. But you know I was going to say, two things stand out. <laughs> the question we asked was, why is Apple TV so embarrassed by this? So right. two things stand out at me. One is obviously this thing with this chick, right? Mm-hmm. The other is we keep hearing Paramount, yes. right? Paramount this, Paramount that. And we all know that Paramount has their own streaming service. And issues. And Brian and I have reported in the past before Joel joined us about Paramount and their money issues and the fact that Legacy, you know, is on the shelf until mm-hmm. they get some money or somebody to produce it. So it's odd that Apple TV is the one distributing this other than we know that they need money. So right. are they well, just talked about that? Did they, does Apple just, is it because of this that Apple doesn't care? Or is it because it's not even theirs that they don't care? Like they paid money for it, but they just don't care. They're just like, okay, we'll put it out. And I couldn't tell you. Yeah, and I, I can't either. That, that's the problem. Yeah, I, it's weird. I, unknown. I don't even know who paid for it. I, I understand uh, Clements and Watiti did the work. I get that. And and I get that, uh, you know, Paramount probably paid for this show. And I, I get that Apple is probably the distributor. So I see the way the money went. And right. I, I'm guessing it doesn't, I don't, we don't have any money figures, but I'm guessing, you know, they made a family friendly and let's go back to here. Yeah. Family friendly show that is, you know, amazing. Or let's go to the new picture since they gave us the second picture. Let's go to the there second picture. Yeah. A new picture. Hey, let's go to this one. But yeah, they gave us a family friendly show that probably likely is. And is he trying to honor the Lord? Yes. Has it had some rip speed bumps in the press? Yeah. Not as bad as Acolyte, but yeah, I mean, it's right. had some speed bumps. It, uh, I think people have kept more professional. I, I think people have, have attempted and tried this. Even if you didn't notice this, this picture, look at this, this this is the same map. I don't know. That's about all I can blow it up. But you see, it's the same map from the old show oh, yeah. from yeah. the 80s. Look at that. Uh, so, I will say we also talked about, you know, we talked about issues with Paramount, Paramount yeah. but also Apple, right? You know, we never got a second season of Severance. There's right. just not a lot going on with them. This. Yeah, we, um, we you enjoyed Adam and, Adam and Severance was awesome. Right. Yeah. Because it's like. 
it's like their heart's not quite into it. It's like they want to be, they want to reap the money, the the monetization of the streaming platform, but yet they just really don't have the infrastructure that Netflix does or or Hulu even nowadays, you know? Um, Which is crazy considering they had like, you know, fire sticks and all this other stuff specific of right yeah and and it explains also why paramount did this for them it's probably them going to paramount saying hey will you produce this show for us because again they don't have the infrastructure for it yet if they if they stay with it Uh, that is very possible. I think the newest news on Paramount this past week was that uh, Skydance was off the table for some time uh, about a merger, and now it's back on the table. So I don't know what is happening with Paramount, but uh, yeah. uh, I think th- there's something happening. I mean, I think a lot of these people are losing to Netflix, and so we're probably seeing a lot of turmoil between them. And maybe they're trying to help each other, or maybe they're trying to hook up you know we'd like to hook our stuff onto apple tv we don't want right. to go to netflix with it I, we we don't want to go to disney with it right. I'm like, you, you know i mean i i don't know what's getting played here but the way the narrative is going it looks like that we're going to see a merge here and a merge there and then you know I, I i don't know if disney's man if disney doesn't get their head out you know they you know what they're going to have a problem with their service uh if they don't start making if this this is a family show that doesn't go into modern day politics that honors the canon of the original. You're going to have a hit on your hands and really? you're going to see exactly what the rating system will really do to something. That's a good show. Even yep. if it's mired in weirdness before we even get to it, you know, uh, but we'll know it's July 24th. And, and my, I can't really give you an opinion on the episodes or the, some of the actors I've never seen uh, in the show, but I do, I do trust uh, uh, some of some of the things that I've read and, and I do trust, I trust some of the backgrounds and, and I did, I do, I do appreciate it when somebody says, Hey, we're going to take a second to recognize Monty Python did this. Yes. We're going to do this because Monty Python did this. We're going to try to keep it. We're going to modernize it a little bit because we have to, but we oh, did it the way dad did it yeah <laughs> so I, I you know the summation for me is is i think it deserves a chance whether Absolutely. it holds whether it holds i don't know guys but we don't have anything to go by except the stuff i read you so it's it's really it's really quite you know if you are a fan of gilliam and if you are a fan of it's an original work with uh palin and gilliam if you are a fan of Monty Python, it looks like you're, they're going to, you know, tickle the berry the correct way. I mean, it, it looks like it, but we so, will see, you know, yeah, I hope so. I think we should yeah. all keep an open mind about it, man. That's that's all you can do. And then just assess as it comes out. And hopefully it'll be everything we want it to be or close enough to where it, it does homage. Well, it's know. Apple TV, so it's going to be your type of schedule, right? How you like, mean, what, like most of the stuff we've been watching, it's oh, not going to yeah. be all just produced, right? And right, one. yeah, it's going to be one at a time, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope. That's, I mean, that's yeah. I, I some stuff is is better all at once, and some stuff needs to be put out one at a time. And I think that would be this. Yes, I agree. Yeah, if it's going to be episodic and we're going to reuse the same characters in the next episode and they're going to play different roles, yes, yeah. episodic would be great. Yeah, there right. could be an overall arc and that's fine. But, uh, you know, if it's episodic, that's awesome. I mean, I, I think a lot of TV needs to go back to episodic. Mm, that yes. would be you know, you, you said can, it. You can tie in the arc if you want to, but it needs to be episodic. Give us a middle. Agreed. I mean, I'm sorry, beginning, a middle, and an end, please. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, pretty please. Totally agree. Uh, you watch Memento. And on yes. oh my god. Yeah. And on that note, I think we have definitely done this justice as much as we can, guys. Go and check it out, July 24th. Yep. And uh, yeah, so that about do it for this episode. This little bonus episode, and we'll see you guys back at the the normal podcast on Saturday. Until then, guys, always remember to be excellent to each other. Brian, Joel, and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. I'm going to get it right this time. (laughs) 